Hello everyone, it's time for another Gumpla review. This time we're looking at the AMX 107 Bawoo from Mobile Suit Double Zeta Gundam. This is one of the Neo Zeon units, and it's a transformable unit. The transformation requires it ripping itself in half, which, yes, is part of how this kit works too. It's a... it's most certainly a thing. Pretty cool looking unit. Though it is a little bit fragile, not just due to that transformation gimmick, but also due to the fact that this is an older kit. Not in terms of me building it, I actually only built this a short time ago, but it is an older kit in terms of its release, which definitely shows in a lot of its problems that this kit has. However, there are only two stickers, the mono eye sticker and the little emblem on the waist. The gun hand uh, has a lot of difficulty holding onto the gun, and tends to pop off, so you're gonna probably have to glue that, unfortunately. That's why it's not here. The hand literally fell apart before I started recording, and I had to just roll with it. A kit is made up of more than just its looks, so let's take a look at the flexibility of the Bawoo. Or rather, lack thereof. As I said, this guy tends to be a bit fragile, but we'll try our best with the flexibility test without breaking it. So the feet have pretty good movement here, primarily because they're used in the transformation. Little tongue here moves a little bit too. It's kind of cool. Uh, back part can pop out because that's, again, like I said, part of the transformation. Let's move the arms up real quick. Side skirts can go pretty far due, again, to the transformation. And as can the upper skirt. It's got a pretty, pretty decent kick there. But only a 90 degree on the knee. A decent side kick because of the side skirts. Not that I think you're going to want to go melee with this kit, but if you do. Head has essentially no movement, a little bit of up and down, that's about it. The arms have a good amount of movement, thankfully. These little shoulder things move a bit as well on their own independently, though keeping them to stand in one place is tough. Arms do not bend well, you get basically a 90 degree on the arms, that's it. Uh, waist doesn't turn at all because that's where the connector are that holds the top and bottom halves together. It always feels a little bit fragile to me. None of the boosters here move, but the wings here do move, as do the missiles attached at the bottom. So you can have them facing forward if you want them to looking like they're about to launch the missiles. You have a little bit of shift on the back here, again due to the transformation gimmick. You can tell I'm being extra careful with this kit. Parts haven't fallen off, but everything feels like it's just on the edge of snapping. For the age of this kit, I think it's pretty decent in terms of its flexibility. Comparatively to newer kits, it has some trouble. Also, its stability can be an issue sometimes. So uh, try to keep it either at a place where it's not gonna have the wind constantly blowing on it because it will probably topple over or better yet, put it on a stand so you don't have to worry about toppling ever. Now let's take a look at the gear. First off, we have the shield. I had to do the paintwork on the cross because it doesn't come painted. Not that hard to do, but still annoying. I guess I would prefer painting it than some ugly looking sticker. I did not paint the cannons on the front. When I went to see other people's work that they did on this kit, they also did not paint the cannons, so I assumed not to. Though I was tempted to put make them all black on the inside. Either way, it'll be your choice. We also get, whom, a pre-molded beam saber. This is the type that came with the Gelgoog Marine, where it does have a pre-molded handle, so everything's made of the same plastic. However, you can easily paint the handle. Uh, unfortunately, before doing this review, I didn't paint the handle. You can paint it. The color of the handles can be seen in the inner arms of the robot. So if you take a look at that, you can match that paint. Of course, since you have the trigger finger on the main hand, you also have standard holding hand in case you want to hold a beam saber or what have you. We also, of course, I know I've been waiting on it, Foom, the big beam rifle. Looks pretty cool. Has the little scope there on the side. It has no movable functionality, but it does look pretty awesome. A little bit of a paint job would probably give this thing a whole nother level, but that's up to you. The only spare parts we have is one polycap. It is a neck part. So if you have a unit that uses the neck part, you have a spare polycap for that. 
Okay, now let's take a look at the Batwu in its mobile armor form. So right here we have the transformed versions. I'll be honest, I'm not entirely certain I followed the instructions exactly, primarily because the instructions are a little unclear. This is an older kit, and you really can kind of feel that older kit feeling when you're going through the instructions. So here's the leg part. We've got a cool little vehicle thing here. It's, it's fine. <laughs> And of course the head and chest part here. What is interesting about this is you can still put the rifle and the shield on here to actually create a more elaborate looking machine. It's nice. Hopefully this is what it's supposed to look like. I'll be honest here, I wasn't originally planning to even transform it, but I realized if I'm doing a review, I better cover the transformation because that is the primary gimmick of this kit. Overall, the mode doesn't look bad. Even if I didn't do it right, it still looks fine enough, but the big question comes down to how stable will this unit be once I put it back together? Overall, this kit, it isn't great. It, it has a lot of problems, a lot of which has to do with the age of this design. The build itself isn't that bad. It does transform decently enough. It does recombine back good as new, but trying to put the shield on, I snapped part of the handle off. Yay, I'll have to figure out how to fix the shield now. If I can even find the part that snapped off, good times had by none. In addition to that, obviously I've had to glue the hand, the trigger finger together in order to get it to equip the gun properly. And even then when it holds the gun, it usually drops it to the ground. So the joints aren't quite as strong as you'd really like them to be. It looks good for what it is, but I would recommend waiting for a new version of this kit or if you get this version, don't transform it. Be aware of the gimmicks you're gonna have to deal with, like trying to get that shield on and what have you without breaking it, and do your best with what you're given. The general pros are just the ease of the build, the limited stickers, the cool looking weapons, and even the transformation gimmick isn't that bad. Unfortunately, the plastic can be brittle at times, Definitely some looseness. I've had to glue several joints just to make sure the joint stays. Sadly, the way the instructions are done where some things aren't quite clear, and there isn't a numbering for the runners either. Meaning you'll get A1 and A2, but in the instructions, it'll just say like A25, and you'll have to know that A25 is actually 25 on A2. Same thing goes for the B frame, the C frame. It's not difficult, it's just a little extra step you have to take. It's one of those little issues that came with older kits. Bottom line is, when you grab an older kit, and this is number 15, I believe, you're taking a gamble. And while I don't outright hate the kit because I think it looks cool, the fragility is a problem. And it really holds this kit back from as good as it could be. In terms of kits I'd really love to see a remake of, this is definitely high on that list. I think it could be done a lot better. I think it could look a lot better. For certain, it could have a lot more stability. I hope this has helped your Gunpla purchasing decision. If you do have a Bawu, let me know if you had any issues like I did with the transformation and the fragility, or if you got lucky and everything was awesome. Until next time, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you at the Tavern.